Another behavior that often happens is that we want to choose what the system will do based on the values of variables. To do that, we use simple conditionals. If we think about the values of all of the variables in the system at any point in time, that's what's in its memory, and we call that the state of the system. Sometimes we want to choose to do something based on the state of the system. Take this example. This is from the childhood rhyme that goes, one potato, two potato, three potato, four. Five potato, six potato, seven potato, more. That's right, Zumi. In that rhyme, we want to say the word potato every time, except when we are on the number four. To get that change in behavior, we use an if statement. An if statement has a condition, and the body of the if, the stuff in the curly brackets, only gets executed if the condition is true. If the condition is false, the body of the if statement gets skipped. In this case, the condition is comparing potato number to four. The exclamation point equals, which is read bang equals, means not equals. So when potato number is not four, we will execute the print line and print out the word potato. When potato number is four, the stuff in the curly brackets will be skipped. Let's look at another example that's a little bit more complicated. Zoomy, what do we do when we want to understand how a piece of code works? Be the machine. Right. So this code starts by declaring a variable age that's going to hold an integer. Now let's suppose that for the moment, the age that is in that variable is 8. When we get to if age is less than 10, that condition is true, so it will print out, you are just a kid. Then it will compare the age to 60 and say, is 8 greater than or equal to 60? Well, that's false, so it will skip the stuff in that curly bracket. Then it will compare the age to 65. Is age equal to 65? Yes, that's what those double equal signs means. That's comparing age to 65. Are they equal? No, they're not. So we skip that condition. And then we get to that last print line and output that to the screen. Now let's watch what happens if instead of being eight, age holds the value 70. If the first condition checks to see is age less than 10. 70 is not less than 10, so we skip the first print line. Then it compares age to 60, and is age greater than or equal to 60? Well, yes, 70 is greater than or equal to 60. So we print out, you have lived a long life. Then it will compare age to 65. Is age equal to 65? No, so we skip the print line in that block. And we go to that last print line at the end and print, that's all I know about your age. Let's do this one more time where the value of the variable age is 65. When we compare age to 10, 65 is not less than 10, so we skipped that. When we compare age to 60, age is, is greater than or equal to 60. So we print out, you have lived a long life. Then we compare age to 65. Age is equal to 65. So we print out, you have become eligible for Medicare. And finally, we print out, that's all I know about your age. So the general form of an if statement is the keyword if, then parentheses holding a condition, curly brackets holding the stuff that we're choosing whether we're gonna do or not do. So there are a couple of important points to make about conditionals. First, they are not if loops. Sometimes students will call them if loops. The term loop implies something that can happen many times, something that is repeating. An if statement is not doing something more than once. It is just choosing, will I do something or will I not do something? So the stuff inside the if statement that we call the body of the if statement happens only zero or one times. 
If the condition is false, it happens zero times. If the condition is true, it happens one time.